Is Perth and Brisbane running out of steam and is it now time to get out of those markets? Today, we're gonna to be having a bit of a deep dive into that. And if you're new to the channel, my name's Julian. I'm the head of strategy here at Ripe House. And we're gonna be having a bit of a deep dive. Obviously, no secret that Perth is one of the hottest markets in the property space, has been for at last, at least the last 12 to 24 months. And we're gonna have a bit of a review of that and kind of where it's sitting and potentially where it's going moving forward. So as we go through that, we're gonna be having a look at the data um, from Ripe House's data and AI R score but also just some of the kind of key metrics which we want to cover off there. So just going to bring some slides up in my screen. And I think it's important to understand that firstly, when it comes to house price, there is also the uh, hidden affordability gender that sits behind there. So if we compare Perth to every other state across the country, we can see sitting at the top is the Sydney market, dwelling prices are just over a million dollars and the average household income is about $215,000. So essentially it's more than five times the household income to get into the Sydney market. As we get down to Melbourne, we're at 3.8. So they're your top two markets. Funnily enough, third is down in Canberra. And then fourth, we're, we're got, uh, we've got Hobart. So if we were having a look, you've got Perth is the most affordable market across the country, higher household income than Sydney. So that is one thing that a lot of people aren't aware of in the Perth market. There's a lot of household income that sits in that Perth market. So it is still a very, very affordable market to get into. So that is one bullish sign that there are still legs to run on this one. And even Brisbane, you know, it's still value if we compare that to Melbourne. There has been some stories out there that coming out saying that Melbourne has been surpassed by Brisbane in terms of the median house price, but that is very misleading. If you dig deep into those numbers, a lot of that is because Melbourne has an abundance of unit and apartments in comparison to that Brisbane market. So that data is heavily skewed because of that oversupply on the, particularly on the apartments phase. Melbourne is still much more expensive when it just gets down to the household level. So we can see here Brisbane and Perth still affordable. Brisbane, uh, sorry, Perth very, very affordable. The other thing we want to get into though is if we look at rent prices, because rental pricing can be a good indicator of capital growth coming moving forward. Because what tends to happen is if you've got tight vacancy rates and Perth is one of the lowest, if not the lowest, vacancy rate across the country and you get rental price increases, that starts to turn people living in the area into buyers because rents start to become so unaffordable in comparison to the value of the property. So we can see here, Perth went up at nearly 20% last year. Brisbane, even though they've had a couple of really strong years, they still went up 12%. You had Sydney and Melbourne. It's probably one thing to point out here that those two markets were actually paying catch up a little bit on the other states because Sydney and particularly Melbourne were impacted quite heavily during that COVID period. We kind of forget there's a lot of international migration that happens in Sydney and Melbourne. So they took, they actually went backwards significantly during COVID. So Melbourne and Sydney have started to play catch up. And if we can look in the forecast for 2024, they are still quite decent jumps, but in comparison to Perth and Brisbane, they're not quite as strong. So those two indicators are telling me if we've got affordability, and we're still seeing rental price movement, that Perth and Brisbane have still got legs to run for at least the next 12 to 24 months as a minimum. We need to understand that when it comes to pretty much anything, but in particularly property, there is always perceived value. So the back end of the algorithm back here, and we're gonna to get to that in a moment now. So if we take a look here, we're having a look at the data numbers for just for Queensland and Perth, I should preface. So this is looking at all suburbs sitting at an R score of 80% or higher. So we're talking about the top 20% of growth numbers, just purely based off data and AI. I should preface that 80% uh, of these suburbs or more will fail the manual verification process that gets put through on suburbs each and every month. But we can still see there's 556 suburbs that are sitting above that 80% score. So this is still a market that is still very, very strong from a data perspective. That is off the back of excellent population growth, 
excellent proximity to utilities and amenities in comparison to other like-for-like -like suburbs. We're seeing rental price continuing to increase. We're seeing yields and vacancy rates stay steady or compress. So all of those are bullish indicators. So there's still quite a bit to run in those markets. So definitely not something to be running out of, still strong buy signals in those markets. But one thing to keep in mind, there's this perceived value out there. So what will happen in these markets eventually, and it always does happen, Hobart has probably gone through that in the last 12 to 24 months. Once it gets to a certain price point where your yields potentially start to drop off, and that is starting to happen a little bit in Perth. You know, we were seeing yields kind of higher fives into the mid sixes early on in Perth, and now it's high fours, mid fives. It's going to continue to comp compress if the capital growth numbers just continue to run away from us. They might get down to four and four and a halfs. That will start to turn off investors because investors are going to start to want to cover their cost base and they won't have such a strong perceived value to the potential buyer out there. So what they will start to do is cast their eye on the rest of the country and they might start looking at Melbourne, they might start looking at Sydney and they go, well, hang on, there's some markets in here and I'm seeing, you know, all of a sudden, I love Melbourne, I love the fact that it's got a lot of population and it's gonna have more uh, larger capital city than Sydney in just a couple of decades. Potentially, I can get into a market where I'm getting four or four or five points percent rental yield in that market. I'm going to take my profits from the WA because I believe it's at the top. I'm gonna to sell down and then I'm gonna to start to pile in to another market, whether it's Melbourne, whether it's Sydney. That will eventually happen. I don't believe we're there yet. We're potentially somewhere between 12 to 36 months away. And there's a myriad of reasons why that might be. It can be government policy regarding investors in Melbourne, affordability, et cetera. But you will eventually start to see that shift where people don't see the value in one market, but we're not there yet because it's still really affordable. Yields are still increasing. And until that starts to shift and, and move into other territories just as heavy, Perth and Queensland are still looking really, really strong. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you have some thoughts on this, please leave some comments below. Love to know what you're thinking out there. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed and we will catch you on the next video. Bye for now.